Some philosophers and theologians have said that the world is unreal or an illusion. And this seems to most people silly. I mean, the desk is real, this chair is real, my body is real. They're not illusions, they're, they're really here. But in some ways, what exists and what is real is not, as I, not ideal. It's not as real as it could be, so to speak. The last words of Buddha, the first sentence was, or is, decay is inherent in all component objects. So let's begin with the idea of component objects. What's a component object? Component or part. Component object is something that has parts, has components. A chair has components, legs, seat, back, maybe arms. A car has components, tires, uh, windshield, uh, hood, engine, transmission, etc. Now, component objects depend on their components to exist. If we remove the legs of the chair and throw them in the fireplace, we don't have a chair anymore. More than that, component objects require their parts to exist and be in the proper relation to each other. If we have the pieces of the chair, but one leg is pointing left, one right, one up, and one down, it, it's not a chair. In this sense, we could say that component objects have relative existence because their existence depends on their components and on the relation of those components. Now, when we say component object, I think of something in space and time. We can broaden the phrase a bit if we say component entity. For instance, a word is a component entity. The word are, they are happy, they are sad. The word A-R-E is a component object. It has three components, it has three letters. But also, the existence of the word are depends on those three letters, its components, keeping the proper relation to each other. If we rearrange the letters, we get the word ear, E-A-R. Same components, different relation, different component entity. In the physical world, a diamond and soot are both carbon atoms. It's in the arrangement of those atoms, the relation of those atoms to each other that makes one thing a diamond and one piece soot. So we can see how component entities have a dependent kind of existence. They depend on something else. Now we can think of the components keeping the proper relation to each other as an act. If I curl my hand into a fist and hold it that way, I maintain the act of making a fist for a minute, let's say, and then I open my hand. You can imagine a, a medical test where the physician asks you to hold your arm over your, over your head for a while to test your shoulder or something. And while you hold that arm steady and, st and motionless, you're doing an act. So we could say relations are an act of components keeping the proper relation to each other. Now, once you start to drill down, the wood is made out of wood molecules, which are made of out of whatever, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. The atom is made out of protons, neutrons, electrons, which are made out of uh, quantum fields or whatever. So something which is real has these properties that it is not there existing independently on itself. It depends on other things, which depend on other things, which depend on other things until you get down to the the quarks or whatever, dependent existence. Another idea I like is ground of existence. The chair's existence is grounded in the wood. The wood could very well exist without the chair existing, but not vice versa. And the wood's existence is grounded in its molecules, which is grounded in its atoms. And do we ever reach bottom? If we do, we would call that the ultimate ground of existence, at least of physical existence in space-time. The existence of ideas is a whole other topic. Now, ultimate ground of existence is a concept. It may not exist. 
uh, we could have thought a hundred or a thousand years ago that the earth, that I, I rest on the earth, I stand on the earth, we might have thought the earth must be standing on something, but it doesn't. But it seems to me at least reasonable to believe that there is some ultimate ground, that you just can't keep going down, 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 and never reach bottom. That might be the case, but I, I, for me it's easy to believe that it's not, that there is an ultimate ground of existence. Well, what does this all have to do with the world being illusory or unreal? It's not for me that it's all illusory and unreal, it's that it's real, but it's not the fullest kind of reality. It, it, something that exists because of other conditions has a dependent kind of existence. We could imagine something that has an independent existence that exists regardless of anything else. That would have, for me, a higher form of reality than something which exists dependently. And if this thing, which was the ultimate ground, was single, if it, if it had parts, we could keep going. So it seems logical that if we ever reach an ultimate ground of existence, it would have to be a single entity, not having parts. So it could be called simple, not in the sense of that it's easy to understand, but just that it doesn't have parts. Also, it could be called pure, not in any moral sense, but in the sense that pure water is just water. There's no uh, lemon juice in there. Uh, the, the idea is that it's just itself and nothing mixed in and nothing else. This has also been called the absolute. Things that have relative existence uh, exist. So it's easy to suppose maybe something that has absolute existence, independent existence, exists. So I would reject the idea that the world is illusory and unreal. I would say the world is real, but I would say the world is real with a small r. And I would say that we could call the absolute, the ultimate ground of existence, the real with a capital R. And that real with a capital R has been the goal of uh, mystics uh, of, of uh, apparently all religions, that they've tried to find the reality behind the world that we live in, which is made up of uh, things with relative existence. And these things with relative existence, these things that depend on something else to exist and depend on the relation of those things are transitory. They come and they go. Everything in space-time that I can see around me is transitory. The Earth itself will burn up in four billion years when the sun becomes a red giant. Nothing is permanent. And I think that that was, that was what Buddha was pointing out. Decay is inherent in component objects. And the idea was that we should not be so attached to things in this world and to component objects because someday they will leave us. And when they do, if we're attached to them, they will cause us sorrow. Not to be completely unattached to the world seems to be an extreme to me, but uh, some people perhaps are too attached to it. And this idea that the world is real with a small r, but that there's something that exists which is real with a capital R, can be a motivation for a philosophical or spiritual or mystical quest. And it could uh, serve as a counterweight to our involvement with the things of the world. Thanks for listening.